He's a really good horse. Exceptionally good looking and fast. Lord Nelson is just a picture type. He's got a beautiful neck and shoulder. He's got a nice hip. He's really strong. Extremely fast. Uh, he's very well balanced. This horse is just an incredible fighter. He's mentally tough. His constitution is just iron. He's as tough, I think, as they make horses. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Keelan Babies, presented by Spendthrift. I'm Dan Ullman, along with Nicole Russo, and we're going to take a look at the field for race number three on opening day Friday at Keeneland, the second of two Keeneland baby races on the opening day card. You'll notice that there are two Spendthrift stallions represented in this race. The number seven, No Picture Charlie by Liaison, the number eight, Infantry by Flat Out. And Nicole, fans should keep uh, a good close eye on race number one, because it appears that several of the horses in race three, workmates of those horses. If some of those horses run well, you might want to upgrade the chances of these. Yeah, definitely. That's an important factor to kind of keep an eye on here, especially with these early blooming horses. And remember that we'll have Keeneland Clocker re reports available at DRF.com from our team throughout the meet. As in race number one, trainer Wayne Rice has a coupled entry, and we'll take this field from a pedigree standpoint in program number order, beginning with the number one Dixie Highway. And there is some class in this pedigree. Dixie Highway is a full brother to Made in Detroit, a stakes placed router on the turf. And the second dam was a really good dirt horse, the multiple grade two winner Dixie Flad. So there's a nice mixture here, but when I see Arch as the stallion, I always think more distance. I definitely think more distance with Arch. I definitely think kind of later blooming horses with Arch. And looking at this classy female family, uh, that second dam that you mentioned, Dixie Flag, earned her best wins at kind of elongated sprint distances, seven furlongs or so. The same is true of Humana Distaff winner, My Trusty Cat, who also shows up on the page. So I kind of think that this one's going to be better with a little bit of added distance. Of the coupled entry, Dixie Highway might end up being the classier of the two, but I wonder if the 1A Mr. Granite will be the quicker and thus more effective at this four and a half furlong distance. His sire, the undefeated Bustin Stones, he has really stamped his foals with his speed. 20% winners with two-year-old debut runners. And if you're looking at a wacky first-time starter at a big price in the teeth against the teeth of award first-time starter, why not Mr. Granite with several bullet workouts? Yeah, I definitely do have to think that Mr. Granite is the stronger of these two in this spot. Bustin Stones, as you mentioned, a very fast son of City Zip. The late City Zip could certainly get you a very fast horse, could get you a good two-year-old, and it seems like Bustin Stones has followed right in his footsteps. We do have a formulator fact, though, for Wayne Rice. The same one as race number one. Only 3% winners, 17 cent ROI over the past four years with two-year-olds on dirt. We'll see what we get out of this coupled entry. The number two is Jabba Jaws, and this is a son of Soldat that only sold for one thousand dollars as a yearling but the dam was a pretty nice runner a stakes winning dirt sprinter in ohio she earned a, a career best buyer of 78 and she has been productive thus far as a broodmare yeah, yeah she's got two winners from two runners to date jabba jaws looking to fall in line with those and some strong works from the son of Soldat, who was a good two-year-old, a versatile, a versatile horse, ran well on dirt and turf, and Soldat by very good two-year-old Sire Warfront. Another inexpensive yearling purchase is the number three, Del La Hoya, who's by Courageous Cat, who does not do well with first-time starters. But interestingly enough, a full to this horse one first time out at two. That's Cala Cab. And we've got a big name as in the second dam. Grade one stakes winning route winner Tarlo. It looks like De La Hoya, at least one of those workouts in company with Zip Secret, the Chapman train runner in the first race. Yeah, and I do very much like Zip Secret in that spot. If I like that one, I, I have to take a look at this one a little bit. But you know, this strikes me as a horse who's going to develop a little more down the line. Courageous Cat, very good turf horse. Uh, I think he was at his best at about a mile. Out of a street cry mare, very versatile stallion. Uh, this strikes me as a turfy pedigree and a pedigree that's going to want a little bit more distance. Trainer Brett Calhoun has the two true saint in race number one. He has the four Shanghai Rue 
in this race. It looks like they've been working in company. This source is by Shanghai Bobby. The dam was okay. A multiple stakes winner in Texas, a career best buyer of 88. She has been productive with a 100% win rate from runner runner rate. And the dam's a half to a graded stakes winner. This one wouldn't be a surprise at all coming off a of bullet work at Evangeline. This one, no, definitely wouldn't surprise me. And you know, Shanghai Bobby, his first yearlings, first two-year-olds were very, very well regarded. Uh, he was kind of supposed to light the world on fire last year. Did well enough to finish fourth on the freshman sire list in a very competitive year last year. He also factored prominently in DRF's exclusive buyer sire performance standings, which you can view those sortable lists on DRF.com. Broodmare sire Uncle Abby, people probably aren't as familiar with. That's a Texas stallion from a, a very, very good page. Uh, this is actually the female family of horses like AP Indy, Lemon Drop Kids, Summer Squall. And Uncle Abby can get a good two-year-old. So I'm, I'm really very intrigued by this horse. It's maybe a less obvious pedigree, but the horse is certainly training well. The number five, Baytown Maca, looks like has been working in company with Baytown Jimbo from race number one. I like the creative causes, 13% with two-year-old debut runners. This one, though, is $6,000 buyback as a yearling. The dam was unplaced. This is her first foal. Uh, uh, nice to see a bullet work out at Keeneland for Baytown Maca. I just wonder if he needs a race, but I do like these creative causes. Yeah, I, I think you hit the nail on the head with, you know, maybe needing a race. But I think that this one, uh, definitely an exotics candidate at the very least, working strongly by a good two-year-old. Broodmare Sire was a good two-year-old. And, yeah, creative cause, another well-regarded young stallion. The number six, My Hot Rod Lincoln, a lot of eyes are going to be on this colt. First of all is trainer Todd Fincher, high percentage trainer in the Southwest in New Mexico, does very well with first-time starters. Second, this this is the first runner by Verrazano, a multiple grade one stakes winner uh, going long on the dirt. A lot of folks forget that he shipped overseas and performed very, very well at the highest caliber of racing on turf. Highly anticipated first crop sire Verrazano, and the dam is a half to champion two-year-old Philly stardom bound. Yeah, Verrazano, one of the horses I'm most looking forward to seeing his offspring this year. Um, I think they might take a little bit of time to develop. Of course, Verrazano really, you know, started making a mark in the spring of his three-year-old season. He's a son of more than ready, of course, versatile, versatile stallion. More than ready was a very good two-year-old. And, you know, he's, he's sired very good two-year-olds as well. So I think all of that is promising for Verrazano. It appears that the seven no picture Charlie has been working in company with L Factor from race number one. No picture Charlie is by Spendthrift Stallion Liaison. And this is a sprinty pedigree. Uh, the dam won her career debut at two. She is a half sister to Beautiful Shot, who's a pretty fast stakes winning sprinter uh, in his own right. We mentioned that John Hancock does very well with these kind of horses. I think this horse represents a sleeper with Corey Lannery aboard. Very much so at five to one on the morning line. I've mentioned before that, you know, I, I love the Indian Charlie line, Indian Charlie, the sire of liaison, the line responsible for stallions like Uncle Mo and liaison got, you know, was kind of under the radar when he went to stud, but got some very good books and mares early on here. So there are people out there who really believe in this horse, and I've been watching them closely because of that. The number eight infantry is by Spendthrift Stallion Flat Out, and this is just a hard-hitting pedigree. Flat Out was a top handicap horse that could do about just a little bit of everything. This dam won 14 times in her career, earned over a quarter of a million dollars, and is a full to a pretty good Iowa bred named Voodooville, who is a fast horse in her own right. Infantry is interesting from a pedigree standpoint. Yeah, definitely. And you know, the hard hitting flat out uh, has a lot of qualities that, you know, I look for in a stallion prospect. He was obviously very fast, as you see from, you know, races like his win in the Cigar Mile, but he could also 
carry that a distance as you saw in races like the jockey club gold cup just a really hard hitting horse but you know he did far better than i was expecting with his first two-year-olds last year i thought they'd be a bit later blooming but he was a top 10 freshman sire and came out guns blazing at his first keeneland meet last year so definitely you know got kind of have to watch these horses here the likely two betting choices in the race round out the field the nine no bang no boom the 10 stage left well they're both trained by west Leslie Ward. No bang, no boom by No Nay Never. His first runner entered in race number one. No bang, no booms. Dam earned a 70 buyer speed figure on a poly track and is a half sister to Cindy with an S, who is a pretty fast sprinter. Again, I think they're trying to make No Nay Never as a stallion early here at Keeneland, and I wouldn't be surprised if No Bang, No Boom runs well, especially with Zensational, a fast horse as the broodmare sire. Yeah, definitely. And, you know, we've already talked a little bit about No Nay Never in race one. He's one of a few sons of that wonderful, wonderful scat daddy who have got their first two-year-olds this year that I'm sure we'll be talking about. No Nay Never, a very good two-year-old himself, stands for Coolmore in Ireland. But he was graded, placed on dirt. The scat daddies are so versatile. And some of his runners have already made their way over here uh, to start their careers. So I do think that this is going to be a versatile sort of horse. Completing the field is the number 10 stage left. This gelding, a $15,000 yearling, is a half-brother to Midnight Bizu, who is going for a big grade one win on Saturday when she starts the odds on favorite in the Santa Anita Oaks. She is currently one of the favorites, if not the outright favorite, for the Kentucky Oaks. The dam was a pretty good horse as well. A graded stakes winning router with an 84 buyer top this is a pretty big pedigree for stage left is it a four and a half furlong pedigree well that's what stops me a little bit midnight Bisu, who leads the list on the oaks countdown on drf tv for joe nevels and i very fast philly popping very good buyer speed figures but she certainly stretched her speed going longer uh, congrats, I, the sire I kind of associate with a longer horse, but you know, he is sneaky good with his two-year-olds. He was a leading freshman sire and he's had runners, you know, like multiple grade one winner, turbulent descent. So it's a good pedigree, maybe not an obvious pedigree going four and a half, but obviously Wesley Ward always has them ready to fire. Fun race full of first time starters. Always fun with these two-year-olds at Keeneland. Nicole, who do you like in race number three? I do think this race number three is a little bit more wide open than race one where I really couldn't look past the Ward pair. I mean, here I do think the Ward pair formidable with no bang, no boom, maybe the stronger of the two in this early four and a half furlong spot. But I think no picture Charlie. And again, we've talked about watching the board. You're going to have to. Um, five to one on the morning line for a horse from a very good two-year-old barn and John Hancock string by a successful young stallion that we've talked about in liaison, uh, Shanghai Rue, I'm also very intrigued by. And I think, you know, underneath, you've got to look at Baytown and the exact. I'm going to be watching very closely to the well Brad Ling starter for Luciano as well. This race wide open to be sure. I agree with you about that. The Ward horses, you never want them to knock you out of any kind of multiple race wager. But I'm with you on the seven. No picture, Charlie. I'm curious to see what this son of Spendthrift Stallion Liaison wants to do. And for a real long shot, how about the 1A Mr. Granite by that very precocious stallion, Bustin' Stones. Nicole and I will have Keeneland Babies all meet long here at video.drf.com. I believe the next Keeneland Baby race is on Sunday, so we'll see you then.